Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to do lesson seven problem set in your workbook. Before we get started, I just want to talk to you about equivalent fractions. That's what we're working on today. An equivalent fraction um, are two different fractions. They have different numerators and different denominators, but they are worth the same value. So for example, um, one whole is equivalent to four-fourths. They're equivalent. They are worth the same amount. Um, we also know that if I had, um, let's see, one half, it's also equivalent to two-fourths. It's worth the same amount. So one half is equivalent to two-fourths. And a way we could check it is we could, a way we could check this is we could cross multiply. And we can look to see four times one is four, two times two is four. They're both worth the same amount, okay? So that's what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at equivalent fractions and see how they may have different numerators and denominators, but size-wise they're worth the same value. All right, let's get started. It says the shaded unit fractions have been decomposed into smaller parts or into smaller units. Express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. The first one has been done for you. So this one, what they had is originally we started with one half, see the shaded areas, and then they multiplied it by two. They broke it in half, so now there's two parts. And we could see that two are colored in out of one, two, three, four. Um, and what we did was we multiplied that by two by breaking it into half. All right, let's do this next one. We're just gonna first look at the part that's shaded in. So we notice that there's one half shaded in and then we broke it into three parts, which means we multiplied one times three. Whatever we do to the top, if we multiplied it by three at the top, that means for the denominator, we also have to, oops, that's a two though. We also have to multiply that by three. And that gives us how many parts shaded in? One, two, three. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just double check this and see if one half and three sixths are equivalent. So I'm gonna use my strategy of um, cross multiplying to double check. Let's see, one times six is six, two times three is six, so I know they are equivalent. Let's go ahead with our next one. If you notice, all four of these start with a half, just to make it easier for yourself. Um, and then they broke it up into how many parts? So let's check and see how many parts did they break it into? One, two, three, four, which means we're gonna multiply that numerator. Sorry, Xander's hitting the camera. We're gonna multiply that numerator by four. Oops, Xander. Okay, bud. Sorry, boys and girls, Xander um, was throwing the iPad around. So. What we have next is we're, because they broke it into four parts, that means we're going to take our numerator and multiply it by four, and we're going to take our denominator and multiply it by four, giving us one times four is four. Let's double check. Are there four parts shaded? One, two, three, four. Yes. Out of two times four is eight. Let's make sure that there's total of eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is. We could also double check by cross multiplying. Is one half equivalent to four eighths? One times eight is eight. Two times four is eight. What I want you to do for the next one is I want you to try it all by yourself. Um, I already started that it's uh, one half, but then go ahead and do that multiplication sentence and find the equivalent fraction. Okay, good luck. All right, boys and girls, hopefully when you did this, you saw that they broke it up into five parts. Um, so then uh, one times five is five, two times five is 10, 
and we could double check doing our cross multiplying and we see that 10 and 10 are equal, meaning they're the same size, also known as they are equivalent. So the next question, what happened to the size of the fractional units when you decomposed the fractions? So let's look back at 1 half, and we found an equivalent fraction of 2 fourths. So when we started, we started with 1 half, and then they broke it, and the part actually did it get bigger, did it get smaller, or did it stay the same? So I want you to do is answer this question. What happened to the size of the fractional units when you decompose the fraction? Did it get bigger, smaller, or stay the same? So hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, you noticed that these parts got smaller as they decomposed them. Um, so you said something about how when they were decomposed, the fractional units got smaller in size. Let's go ahead and do F. What happened to the total number of units in the whole when you decompose to the fraction? What happened to the total number of units? So, for example, when we started up here, we had a half. So there were just two parts, one half and one half. Then we realized, once we decomposed it, we ended up with four parts. So the number of units, actually, the total number of units actually got bigger. There were more of them. Uh, so we can say the total number of units sorry okay ladies and gentlemen what I wrote was the total number of units increased we got more units um, as we decompose the fraction let's move on to question two draw two different area models to represent one-third by shading decompose the shaded fraction into sixth and ninths. Use multiplication to show, the, to show each fraction is equivalent to one third. So we'll do this one as um, sixths. We'll break this one up into six and we'll break this one up into ninths. So what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is I have a fraction that's broken up into thirds. One third, one third, one third. And we colored in one part out of the three to represent one thirds. Now, we're trying to break it up so it equals six. So how do I get from three to six? Remembering up here we used multiplication and then we broke it up. So what could I multiply three times something that equals six? Hopefully you said two. So if that means if we multiplied it by two, we broke it up into two parts. Let's see if there's six pieces now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. So what we did, let me just write it so you can see my multiplication sentence here. Um, what we did was we broke it up into two parts. That's why we multiplied it by two. And we have two parts colored in out of six. We could cross multiply to double check and see. Are they equivalent? Yes and yes. We're going to go ahead and try that with ninths. So let's first start with our one third. Here's my one third. And then we're trying to get to ninths. So what could we multiply by to get to ninths? Or how could we decompose this to have nine parts? Let's see. So we had one third and we're trying to get to nine. Three, six, nine. I know if I break this into three parts, I will have nine total parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three of them are colored in out of those total nine. To show this with a multiplication sentence, I could show that I broke it up into three parts and that it was three ninths. And we could double check that these are equal by cross multiplying. Okay? All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to the homework page. And I want you to try two. It says decompose the shaded fraction into smaller units using the area model. Express the equivalent fraction in a number sentence using multiplication. So you could break it in half, you could break it in thirds, you can break it in fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, eighths, whatever you want. Just look that this is um, colored in. I don't know if it shows it good on your workbook. And this part is colored in, okay? Then um, don't forget to send me a picture 
And today your math exit ticket, I think there's only three questions. It's labeled like this, math exit ticket 428 on the Schoology uh, page. So your exit ticket and then these two problems. All right, guys, good luck.